my fellow human beings, and welcome to episode 56 of The Best Blessed Life. I'm your best host, Kristen, and today's topic is, am I ready for tacos, tortilla, dessert be better? I'll explain in a minute. Before we get started, I want to thank you all for watching. Please continue to watch, comment, share, like, subscribe, ring that bell, and please pass them on to anyone you think that they could help. With that being said, our uh, list for today, couldn't think of the word, I'm having a spaz attack already, is to go over the positive words from the week, and we're going to do dinner done differently, or is it dessert? I'll explain that in a minute, but let's do first our positive words. Okay, so we're going to be starting... Sorry, we're a little discombobulated. Had issues with my new ring light. And Peyton, God bless her, was ever so helpful. All right, so I start from Thursday, from Friday of last week, which is the 31st. So New Year's Eve was fresh, feel full of energy and enthusiasm, pleasant, bright, and clean in, in appearance. Saturday is purpose, the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Have as one's intention or objective. The second was candor, the quality of being open and honest in expression and frankness. Uh, uh, Monday was promise, a declaration or assurance that one will do a particular thing or that a particular thing will happen. Fourth was the abilities, possession of the means or skills to do something, talent or proficiency in a particular area. And today, which is the fifth, is fortitude, strength of mind that enables a person to encounter danger or bear pain or adversity with courage and strength. Okay, now I'm going to explain what I'm doing here. So I'm asking you if I'm ready for tacos and, or, <laughs> I know, or will it be dessert is basically what I was trying to do there, a little play on words. I don't know if it came out right or not. So basically I was saying, am I ready for tacos or will a dessert be better? So there you go. And to explain all that is that little sign in the back. We're making taco sandwiches and tortilla cheesecake rolls. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Okay. So you know how much I love my slow cooker because it allows me to do other things while something is cooking instead of standing over it and monitoring it all this time. So in the bottom of my slow cooker, I have chopped up onions and garlic. Oh, and this is a taco sloppy joe recipe actually that is made with ground beef. Uh, it's got one pound of ground lean ground beef, one medium onion, two cloves of garlic minced, one packet of taco seasoning, one cup of ch chunky salsa, and a quarter to a half a cup of water. Okay, so you don't have to finagle it a little bit. Um, so I'm using chicken, as you can see. And in place of water, I'm probably going to use um, chicken stock, hopefully. So what I'm going to do is, they wanted ground beef, and this was all done in a skillet. I'm now making it um, slow cooker ready. So I'm putting two pretty decent size, actually this one's ginormous, decent size chicken breasts in here, chicken, boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and then a packet of, um, this seems awfully, packet of, um, Taco seasoning, I couldn't think there for a second, again, is, um, uh, a quarter of a cup, and it seems like I have too much of the taco seasoning. Sorry if I didn't say that already. Yeah, see, this is almost a half a cup. I'm gonna, I just have a big thing of taco seasoning. I don't have, um, like that's plenty. I don't know what I was measuring earlier. That seems like an awful lot. Okay, and then one cup of chunky salsa. I'm going to pour that in there, all on top. And then I'm also um, going to add my chicken stock, which I hope I have some open and that I forgot to get out. 
And do I, do I, do I, do I, do I? Um, it appears not, which makes it even worse because I have to get up on a... Uh, doo -doo. I can... <laughs> ah, my thing is pulling me over. Oh my goodness gracious. Wouldn't it be just like me to forget to put something out? And um, I'm ready to pull my computer off the table there. See, I have just the big thing of taco seasoning. Okay. Don't look at my messy. Believe it or not, it was organized at one time. Okay, and then we're gonna do our quarter to a half a cup of chicken broth. Okay, so this is a half a cup. And I think just because we're doing the slow cooker thing, it's probably better to add more than less. I wanna have a little sauce to mess around with, right? Okay, maybe a little more, maybe a little scooch more, just because I want to get it all like wet. Okay, now, guess what? That's all done already. Okay, so now, I mean, it's not done, but it's done being ready to be done. Ha ha ha. Okay, so what I did was I put the chicken breast in whole because later on, I'm gonna like, Almost shred it, I guess, for lack of a better word. And we're going to cook this on high. Um, hopefully, they'll be done by dinner time. We shall see. Okay. Um, okay, that's done. Isn't that fantastic? Six minutes and 45 seconds that took, guys. And then I have, um, we had tacos for New Year's Eve. So we have leftover guacamole. And um, since we put the salsa in with the chicken, we don't really need a salsa. Um, I have cheese and black olives. And uh, they suggest lettuce, but I'm not a big lettuce fan on hot sandwiches. So you do you. Whatever you put on tacos or fajitas. That kind of thing will work brilliantly here, okay? And I'm washing my hands now, and I'm just thinking, how did I put that chicken in there? Probably touched it. Okay, so now we have that set aside, right? The next thing we're going to work on is our... Um, now, this was a recipe from... i got to get my glasses on. Pinterest again, bellofthekitchen.com. And then we are going to go to, actually, they're calling them chimichangas, but I'd call them tortilla roll ups. Um, and these are deep fried, but you know we're not going to deep fry them. And deep fried. Cheesecake chimichangas, they call them. But I think of them more as a taquito or a roll up, something of that nature. So, you know, I have to mess with it because, you know, to me, deep fried does not sound healthy. And, you know, a lot of the stuff she uses isn't the healthiest. Come on, jump to the recipe. I, I, A L O. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to give you her name, the recipe. It's A L Y O N A cooking, and it's on Pinterest. You can look it up by deep fried cheesecake chimichangas. All right. I guess since I can't get it to jump to the recipe, I'm just going to have to. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do differently is I'm baking them and I have my oven preheated at 375 
because that's about what they say you should have your oil at. I might up it a little bit. And I also have a baking sheet over there um, greased or sprayed with um, nonstick spray. And then what I'm going to do is find a bowl, not that one, because it's got a hole in it. Because <clears throat> I got to mix up my che cheesecake ingredients. So she recommends 16 ounces of, I'm going to give you the recipe here, 16 ounces of cream cheese softened, a quarter cup of sugar, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, one tablespoon of sour cream, and then the oil for frying. So you know I'm doing my Greek yogurt thing. Okay, so we're using 16 ounces of Greek yogurt. Um, and it doesn't need to be softened because, hello, it's already soft. I'm not saying it's not a mess, but... I try to get out most of it. Okay, and then in place of the sour cream, I'm actually doing like a little bit of cream cheese and it's room temperature. I don't even, I can't even measure it. Maybe a couple tablespoons um, as opposed to one tablespoon. So I'm gonna mix that together. Get that all like, so it's cohesive. I don't know if that's what I was supposed to do or not. I didn't really read the directions like you know how I do. Because I have to re uh, reconfigure it as that is not how I will be making them. Okay. Well, it says to use your mixer, but I'm not getting that out now. I can beat this myself or whisk it. So my son went back to Denver on Monday, but I have my beautiful daughter here for a few more days. She's feeling a little under the weather, but not COVID related. Okay. So we're mixing that, blending, blending, blending. Because really all we're doing is combining the um, set ingredients above so that we can fold them into our little taco, or tortilla, sorry. I was going to call them shells, but I guess they're just not shell-shaped. Okay. So you know that in order for it to be cheesecake flavor... And for me to not add as much sugar. So in place of sugar, I'm using honey. And uh, they call for a quarter of a cup. And I probably have an eighth of a cup of honey here. Because I wanted to cut that in half as well. And then in order to kind of still get that cheesecake type of um, flavor, I have my trusty rusty cheesecake pudding that I'm going to just add to this as soon as I get the honey incorporated. That's the one thing I hate about honey. And I always think to myself, spray the darn thing and it should come out easier because I've seen that done. And of course, I never remember. Okay. So, sun is back. Daughter's still here. I'm still here. We're still making quick, fun, easy. I'm like, did I even hit record? I've had that problem before. Woohoo! Okay. All right. So now that I have a little bit, you know what I think I want to do for a smidge? I think I want to whisk it for just a bit. And then I'm, I'm also considering, what the heck? <laughs> you would not believe what this day has entailed so far. Um, I might also have to turn up the temperature 
on the oven um, to get more of the deep fried ness And then you, we roll them in a sugar um, cinnamon sugar. But here is going to be the issue. What do they say? How do you get the... Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Secure each roll up with it. Oh, you roll them after. Okay, so here's going to be our the flaw in our plan. Is because we're, they're supposed to be coated in a cinnamon sugar. And because we're not deep frying them, they're not going to have an oily kind of coating. So we're going to have to come up with a different way for our cinnamon sugar to kind of adhere to the outside. Okay. Now we're going to add our pudding. Oh, we still got to add our vanilla too. And it was how much vanilla? Half a teaspoon, but I think I might go a whole. Okay, so if you think about pudding when it's made, you use, um, where do they put the directions anymore? Here we go. Two cups of milk. So we might only use half this package since we're only using a cup of, and I don't want it to be too pudding y. So I'm just going to like probably pour half of that in there. Telling you, instant cheesecake. I was thinking about adding a flavor to this. Seriously, like pumpkin or something of that nature. Yeah, it really grabbed onto that really hard. <laughs> I'm going to have to add some milk. A little too much pudding mix in the pudding here. So we're going to thin it out just with a few little splashes, hopefully. We want to get that pudding evenly dispersed too because it's just in blobs in there. Okay. Couple more. Yeah, that's not coming out enough for me. We're close, but we're not close enough. So you probably should measure a little bit more <laughs> carefully if you're using the pudding mix to um, use a little bit less. Once we get it, we'll get it good. Okay. We're close, we're close, we're close. Just a little bit more milk. Yeah. Probably not even a half a package, probably. Maybe only a couple teaspoons, like we did, or tablespoons, like we did for the um, carrot cake frosting. Okay. Hopefully that's enough. It looks pretty smooth now, too. That's the nice thing about adding that little bit of milk. Okay. Now our vanilla. I know she said half a teaspoon, but I went a whole, in my opinion. Vanilla in a cheesecake especially is crucial. It's crucial. All right, so now she has, I don't know how I feel like 
Um, still need more milk. How I feel like um, she's going to get 14 small. I don't know what is meant by um, I think she's like heaping tablespoons. I don't know. I feel like if I use heaping tablespoons, I'm not going to get um, oh, here she goes. I'm not going to get 14 that's just my opinion. I don't know. But it feels like there's not enough um, cheesecake filling for the amount of... That's, just... <gasps> no! That's too much. That milk just went flying. Okay. Actually... That might have been just perfect. Sweet. Yeah, she's a beaut. Right texture. Smells cheesecakey. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to warn y'all now that my tortilla rolling skills are not the greatest. And, um, I've had these sitting out from this morning, but I'm a, I, I don't know, I guess we'll just have to play a beer. I just don't know if I'm a, let me get this mess out of the way here. If I'm going to get heaping tablespoons. Use a paper plate. Get this out of the way. Uh, out of my. You know what? If I did that, I feel like it would almost be. Too much and it'd be squirting out. But she has it so that. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Like, I'm not really good at this. And I think my cheesecake filling needs to set. So I might have to actually put it in the fridge for a little bit. Okay. And then she flips the sides in. And then you kind of, you roll away and roll up. Roll up. I told you it's not going to work out well. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. If I knew somebody that knew how to do this. Yeah. My, my innards are a little runny. Okay. They're good though. Okay. 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 I'm trying to get. Okay. No. How do you get them to stay? I guess you get, would automatically put them in the deep fryer. Okay. Oh no! We have a break in the dam. And we're trying to escape. All right, so we're going to put them on here. Hope for the best. Okay. Where's my pudding? I might add a little more pudding. I know that's cuckoo, but my, my innards are a little too runny. This is what happens when you 
Um, don't pay attention to how much you use in a recipe. Okay, that's probably better. Okay. Just scoop. And I think I'm putting it a little too close to the sides is my problem. So, because when I roll the sides in, I need to have, this one might be too small, but this is the general idea, I think. Then bring it in. Tuck in the sides as you go. Okay. Stay. Helps if you talk to the book. Makes them feel important. I don't know. Can you tell anybody else, tell me if they talk to their food when they're making it? Or often talk like they're hosting their own Food Network TV show? Because that's how I roll, usually. All right, let's try not to get it too close. So, see, you get to spend a lot more time on fun things if you plop your dinner in the <laughs> to the crock pot right away. And hope to goodness that you're Okay, I'm not saying they're pretty at by any means whatsoever. But I'm wondering, I don't know. I'm wondering if there's a better way to like plop this on there. Because I don't want it to be like squirting. Okay, mine are gonna be a little fatter. How's that? I think that's more the way to go. Just give it a kind of a half fold. At least that sounds good, right? Okay, I'm also wondering what you guys want to see next as far as what I send out to people. By that I mean I sent out the the carrot cake sample to a couple people to taste test. And now I'm wondering what would be the next thing. Because you know I can't send things like this out. It would just not make it. But. And then I also need to know if it would be fun to watch other people try the food live, so to speak. So maybe I invite a guest over and they get to try the food. Or they run away screaming, one or the other. I'm not sure which. The issue is going to be is if I'm not putting enough in here now and I run out of tortillas because I don't even know if I had or didn't count them before I started. <laughs> and I'm getting it everywhere as usual. Wonderful. Mice. Okay. Again, they look more like a really s badly rolled burrito. And as I, oh, come on. And as I get further on down the line here, they're definitely getting worse. But I think. The good news is that I have just enough stuff to make or use the dough, the dough, the filling. I'll get it. Oh, and then the the um the outer like cinnamon sugar 
coating is like a uh, half a cup of sugar to hold on I'll get that for you one and a half uh, teaspoons of cinnamon I think it was but I want to give you the exact <clears throat> measurements since nothing else has been exact but you know my tablet likes to not cooperate but we make do. Okay, it was, don't freeze on me now. Thank you. It was a half a cup of sugar to one and a half teaspoons ground cinnamon. And what I, do, I did was I did the half cup of, and it's coconut palm sugar and the one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. Yep, I think we're just going to have the right amount. But for future reference, I think these would be fun for like um, Thanksgiving to make pumpkin ones. And for, um, you could do uh, like, uh, I'm trying to think of what else you could do. I definitely could easily go for like um, a cherry, like cheesecake, because I love cherries on my cheesecake. And um, putting it on the outside for this particular recipe, especially since I'm baking them, doesn't make sense. But I wonder if you could incorporate them into. Um, into the filling, you know, like mix it together, like cherry pie filling, and look at that, guys! I just had enough. La la! I love it. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so into the sink these go. Throw that away. Wash my hands. That's getting heated up. I think I might open it and get the um, chicken covered a little better. Okay. I'm very popular today, guys. Everybody in the world is calling. And why is it they only call when I'm doing this? Okay, so I got one, three, I got 12. I'm supposed to get 14, but I got 12. Um, I'm not heartbroken about it. And here is going to be the hard part is because I got to figure out how long I should have cooked. I should cook these for, let's see, yeah, two to four minutes is definitely not going to be enough. And yeah, we're just going to have to monitor them. So we're going to spread them out. Like I said, they're, the, they're not the prettiest um, chimichangas you've ever seen, but they will do. Okay. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in. I'm going to check them after about 10 minutes. And fingers crossed, they will be <laughs> cheesecake chimichangas, or as I was calling them, tortilla roll-up cheesecake. Tortilla cheesecake. <laughs> I'll get it yet. Okay, here we go. Okay, in you go. And actually, yeah, 10 minutes. All right, I'm going to put you on pause. And we'll be back in 10. Wish us luck. Hi, guys, we're back. So I had to uh, 
After the 10 minutes, I flip them over and we're trying them for another 10 minutes. They're not very dark, um, but I guess I didn't figure they would get that dark in the oven. Um, and then what I came up with for our um, to replace the oil, so to speak, on our like if we had deep fried them like we were supposed to, um, what we would replace the oil with to um, get the cinnamon sugar to stick onto the outside. And so we're going to try applesauce. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush them with a little bit of the unsweetened applesauce the minute I think they're done. I put them in for another 10 minutes. I don't know if I said that. Um, and then also here I have a Tupperware container with our cinnamon sugar in it to roll them in. Oh, you guys, I'm just like, I'm not sure this experiment is going to work out, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, yeah, the other problem is, um, they're probably done. Yeah, they're probably done. They're getting a little crispy, and they're starting to unroll because I flipped them over. All right, so I'm going to flip them back over the other way. Flip them around. Yeah, they're definitely done. They're definitely, um... Crispy enough. This one here is kind of giving me the hardest time. I didn't wrap this last one very well, apparently. There we go. Okay, and then while they're hot, we're just taking this. And hopefully it won't, um, I know it's gonna have an apple leaf flavor, but I figured, you know, what's the difference whether it's, um, uh, we're gonna call them apple uh, cheesecake. <laughs> chimichangas. Really what we need it for is the wetness or the to so we could get them to adhere to the or the cinnamon to adhere to the you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna move over here. Let me put down something on my counter. Let me grab them. I'm gonna move them over. I've got some started here, so I want to get these in here pretty quickly into the cinnamon so that I can do the other side. So I'm going to drop it in. This one here uh, was the first one, and it uh, I thought was the best wrapped, but turns out it's squirting out a lot of the cheesecake filling. Come on. Okay. Ooh, that's some dark. <laughs> hmm. Not bad. I guess we have to be prepared to put them into them the minute we brush them with the applesauce. We roll them around. Maybe this container is not the greatest container for this. It seems like there's too much of a lip on the one side. Or the applesauce just got cooked on there. There we go. That's probably what it was. I gotta do them faster. Got to do it faster. I almost gotta do it in the, the container. <laughs> In the container. Let me get a spoon out so that I can do something like this and then shake it off. <laughs> and then shake it off. I forgot to turn off the timer. Okay. So we're going to plop this in. We're going to do double duty here. 
flip it over just a little bit. You could probably use whatever um, juice you wanted too, like an apple juice or orange juice, depending on what flavor you want to come up with, flavor profile you want to use. Pumpkin. Oh, wrong thing. Come on. Roly poly oly. Yeah, using this coconut sugar really uh, gives it such a dark color. Flip them over. Paint the other side. Let me take the spoon. Do a little dippity dip. I just keep sticking the spoon in the applesauce instead of the instead of a sugar. Yeah. Come on. Okay, then drop this guy in here, paint them. Don't you like how I'm doing this double-handed? With one hand, we're doing cinnamon sugar. With the other hand, we're doing the applesauce. Shaky, shaky. Pop it in. I think the ni the nice thing about the applesauce is that it is thicker than a juice, so it's it kind of adheres to it a little better. And again, you're replacing that oil. You don't have to worry about the the fat. And you're replacing it with. Some natural. Applesauce. Naturally unsweetened. Now nobody said you were going to stay clean during this process because your hands will get messy. And it's starting to all stick. <laughs> That one was falling apart for sure. Okay. Put them over. Give it a little shimmy shake. Okay. I like the dusting process as opposed to the rolling it in. It seems like it covers it with a lighter coating than. Trying to roll it in there. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Okay. I might even put them back in for a couple seconds. I'm trying to debate on whether that would be wise. I don't know if it would melt the cinnamon sugar too much. I just wanted to adhere to it, you know? Maybe it would dry it out a little bit. Okay, da da da. Our last one, guys. Okay, 
Okay, okay. <laughs> Again, in my endeavor to make you a healthier dessert, I end up wearing it. All right, so I think I'm going to put them back in for just a couple minutes, just so the um, cinnamon sugar applesauce combo has a chance to dry out a little bit. And then, hopefully, we'll be able to get Peyton up here to try one. Any chance, Peyton? Will you come up and try one in a little bit? Okay. All right, so I'm going to get cleaned up, and, and then I will be back with you guys. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the, um, the experiment will have gone well. Okay? We'll be back in a few minutes. Hi, guys. We're back, and I brought my taste tester. Okay, fingers crossed, guys. These turned out decent. I, I picked this one for us. Okay. And hopefully they're not too too hot still. I took them out about 10 minutes ago, I think. Maybe a little longer. They smell good. They do smell really good. Okay. Okay, girl. You ready? Ooh, pretty cool. Oh. Mm. It's dippy. Pretty good. Pretty good. It's not very sugary on the outside. No. So we might have to roll them in a little bit of granulated sugar. But the inside's good. Mm. Applesauce really took over. It did. It always does. I don't get it. Still good though. Still very good. But I would say a quick dusting of regular sugar might be necessary just so we can see if it makes that big of a difference i'm gonna have us put a little bit on the one we have i have to put it on the plate have you kind of doink it i'll roll it in there one or the other That's probably definitely what it needs. I didn't get to put <laughs> sorry my mouth though. Too much on that bite. So I think we completely rolled each one. It'd be pretty close to decent. I wouldn't say they're fantastical, but they're pretty decent. They're pretty good. I would try again. I think the thing I would change would be to add the gran a little bit more granulated sugar. And then the applesauce. And then the applesauce does take over. Um, I don't mind it because I think of it as like an apple pie or an apple pie cheesecake. But to come up with something else to get the outside to stick. Yeah. Um, other juices or something maybe. Or maybe even a jelly or a strawberry jelly or... A Something of that nature. Because they do recommend dipping them in like a strawberry jam or jelly. All right. Well, thank you, Taste Tester. I greatly appreciate your assistance. Thank you for feeding me. Of course, as always. And with that, I think we're done for today. Uh, the slow cooker is still going. I will get a review for you up on the website tomorrow when I post this video. And um, I will let you know what everybody thinks. Um, I'm going to pull the chicken like it'll be a pulled chicken type of thing. And it's supposed to go in a bun with, uh, and then do your favorite taco toppings. And that's about it. So I will get you a picture of those and uh, a review from the fam on exactly what they think. And I will uh, talk to you guys later. I'll see you next week. And with that being said, I want you guys to have a good day. Go do great things. 
be your best self, and please live your best blessed life. Thanks for watching. Bye.